Hey guys what the frick is up? Welcome to my series The Dark Side of K-Pop. In this series I will be talking about dark sides and controversial things in K-Pop. Series will be coming out once a month on Saturdays. You can DM me about what you want me to talk about in next episode. But let's move now to the video. In today's episode I will be talking about double standards in K-Pop. I have decided to split this in categories but first I'll explain what the double standard is to those who don't know. A double standard is a code or policy that favors one group or person over another. If a teacher lets all the boys bring candy for lunch but not the girls, that's a double standard. A standard is a way of evaluating someone, and a double standard is two-faced. Now we will move to the categories so I'll explain the most canon double standards in K-pop. First category is facial expression. The problem here is so called RBF which is mostly known as the resting bitch face. When a male idol has a RBF netizens tend to call them handsome, sexy. But when it comes to female idol, they are first to insult them and hate on them. As an example I'll go with Crystal and Jenny. First I'll go with Crystal since her sister former member of girls generation Jessica is known as the IC queen. Jessica is the older sister of Crystal. Both of them have the same facial expression, but no one hate on Jessica for this. People were in love with her. They even called her the Ice Princess then why are they hating now on Crystal? Crystal has been criticized for her cold image thousands of times. She even spoke up about this. Crystal said, I used to get stressed when I was young since I debuted back when I was 15 years old. I was also very upset to hear those comments back when I was young but it's not like that anymore. I don't care much about it. I don't use the internet often but when I do, I use it and get off without reading such comments. During the same interview Super Junior Z Chill said, she appears like that when you first met her. She looks chick and cool but once you get to know her she is just like everyone. Her age. Crystal's cool image was misunderstood as being arrogant and rude. Since Crystal's case was solved as a simple misunderstanding let's move now to Jenny. She's the one of the most hated K-pop idols. One of the reasons is her resting bitch face. Jenny was multiple times called a rude bitch, mainly because of her cold image. Jenny didn't speak up about this so here are my theories. Remember these are just my theories you don't have to believe in them. Remember this is just a theory not facts. I'm not hating on Jenny. My first theory is that she's just tired and stressed. Imagine having a really busy day. At the end of the day you can't go home and rest. You have to get ready for red carpet. Which means takes approximately 4 hours. Which makes you even more tired. Would you be able to stand there and smile? I don't think so. Jenny has low stamina. So for her it might be really tiring. My second theory is that she doesn't like red carpet. She doesn't seem to enjoy it at all. She looks like she just wants to leave, which may be caused of photographers. My last theory is that netizens are overreacting. She doesn't have to smile all the time. We all know Korea is sexist. It's not a secret. When a male has a cold image it's seen as cool or mysterious look. But if it comes to female it's seen as rude and arrogant behavior. In South Korea woman has to be more like a bright person. Has to smile all the time. Act cute and all this shits. But if she changes her image from what netizens are expecting they start to hate over this person. A good example is FX Amber. She has more of a boyish style. That's the only reason why they're hating on her. So here I will start the second category which is appearance slash outfits. Amber has been really open about being called a man in a girl group, but it looks like it doesn't really bother her. Here's her BBC interview. I've been going through thousands and thousands of these comments. It's very hard to read and I, I think us humans are just so cruel to each other. We just want to keep judging each other on on uh, our looks. I think that's what a lot of people misunderstand is that me being a tomboy or being androgynous is not a concept. That's me. Why Amber's chest so flat? Amber don't have boobs. I'm trying. Yeah, I, I need to say something about it. I was trying to conform with what society wanted me to do and I, as I was doing that I just felt more uncomfortable, I felt more hopeless. It's, it's tiring, like you, you're chasing somebody's approval. I found this, is this, a, is this a boob? Keep looking. A lot of the comments were saying like, oh I'm flat chested too. It's always great to know that like I'm not the only person out there that, and that people are um, deal with that too and it's just like hey I'm not alone if I can 
do anything to make someone not feel alone. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Amber was and still is criticized for being herself meanwhile male idols are wearing wigs, dresses, girlish makeup and for them it's funny. They are not getting criticized because it's supposed to be funny meanwhile Amber has a boyish style. It's not a concept she's not doing this for fun. She's being herself. She's wearing clothes the way she feels comfortable, but gets huge hate for this just because it makes her look like a boy. I can say she is definitely one of the most discriminated K-pop idols. She's expressing herself by the way she wears clothes, hair also she's getting hate for. Her tattoos. Of course she's not the only female idol to receive hate for tattoos. Let's move now to subcategory which is sexy outfits. The difference here is whenever a man is taking his shirt off everyone are fangirling and shit but whenever a girl shows too much skin she's called a bitch or cheap. There was one female idol that decided to stop this and did this. Ayuna former 4 minute member is the first ever female K-pop idol to take off and perform. Without a shirt, surprisingly she didn't really receive any hate but people were wondering if it's appropriate. But when a male takes off or lifts their shirts everyone is fangirling over them not even. Thinking if it's appropriate or if it's not. Female idols have to wear really short dresses, skirts, pants that makes them feel uncomfortable but somehow no one critics them about wearing too short pants or a dress and i actually have a theory about this there's a lot of pervs in south korea we all know that many men used to touch themselves inappropriately on their live stages so that's why jyp gives it's the appropriate clothes that are not too short to protect them which i think is a brilliant idea since yuna is 15 years old Let's move now to thread category which is sexy dance. Many really many dance moves have been banned. Mostly female groups dances. Why this move is banned but not this one dance. A dance move is banned when it's too provocative. But somehow it's only for female idols. The problem is whenever a man is ripping his shirt off everyone is like oh my god operas. So hot but when a girl does a slightly sexy move she's bashed and called a bitch. You might ask why. Most of people will reply with she's showing too much skin yet your. Oppa shows not only his abs but also titties. Here are more dances that were banned even though they weren't even provocative. <laughs> Yes both of these choreographies have been banned for being too sexy. Let's move now to the last category which is dealing with scandals. As a K-pop stand since 2013 I have noticed the differences between dealing with scandals. For female and male idols. As we all know former Tuna 1 member Park Bomb has been involved in drug scandal. Later it was revealed that she tried to smuggle that reel which is used commonly in the USA. To treat medical condition like ADHD which is attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Park Bomb later then explained everything about the scandal. In interview she said, I have medical condition that requires medication since middle and high school years. I have that attention deficit disorder which isn't too well known in Korea. There aren't a lot of medications out to treat this condition, so I take what usually gets prescribed for ADHD, attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. Even with medication, it's hard to overcome my symptoms. Attention deficit disorder is a neurological disorder that causes a range of behavior. Problems such as difficulty attending to instruction, focusing on schoolwork, keeping up, with assignments, following instructions, completing tasks and social interaction, which means Bomb was taking Adriel as a medication to treat this condition. However it was mistaken with amphetamine, it literally threw her to the dogs, hid her for two years and then disbanded Tuna 1. Meanwhile a former member of Big Bang Sungri is involved in illegal gambling, sex scandal, 
and many more scandals that involved not only him but many famous K-pop idols. If someone doesn't know what's going on, the Burning Sun scandal, also known as the Burning Sun Gate, is a 2019 entertainment and sex scandal in Seoul, South Korea which involved several celebrities, including Korean idols of popular K-pop groups and police officials. It was the largest scandal to hit the K-pop industry and impacted the image of its artists. The allegations of sex crimes involved added to the country's epidemic of what is called mocha, a Korean word for the online distribution of unconsented sex videos taken of women, and the scandal became fodder for political parties, who argued over how to handle it. Bomb is still called a drug smuggler meanwhile her scandal shouldn't have been called a scandal, if it comes to Sungri, YG gave him a perfect platform to resign from Big Bang and people are still blindly supporting him and even defending him, which is disgusting and disturbing. He's not a K-pop idol anymore, he retired but some VI. P's doesn't know they have to stop thinking it's their opera and shit. He's a criminal, he belongs to jail so stop blindly supporting a criminal person. Another scandals I wanted to compare are Red Velvet Wendy's and Exo Chen's racist jokes. Wendy last year did an impression of how African Americans speak. Girl, what did you say, girl? No, no, you ain't doing that. Meanwhile, Chen's racist scandal was definitely a much bigger deal than Wendy's. <laughs> he compared himself to Kuntikint, a slave character created by the racist white man. Michael is also a blackface character, so basically he compared himself to a black person that's a slave. Yet it wasn't a huge scandal and it's forgotten now meanwhile Wendy is still facing consequences of her actions, she's still facing a huge backlash. Firstly even Korean. Netizens used to bash her but now they are protecting her from westerns. What part was that? I don't know, don't ask me. It's your dance. <laughs> Someone screamed at Wendy racist during fun meeting in Chicago. Why instead of educating our idols about what is wrong and what is right most of you all are hating and bashing them. The double standard existed, still exists and will still exist we can't really do much about it unfortunately. Korea is one of the most sexist countries on the earth. Women have more rights than a few years ago but still it's not really a good idea for a woman to live there. So this was the first part of my The Dark Secrets of K-Pop series. I'm really so excited. And I hope you guys will enjoy the rest parts as much as you enjoyed this one. Well at least I hope that you enjoyed this one. There will be around 10 parts so stay tuned. Thank you so much see you soon bye.